Richard Bailey, caller number 31231. Good. That's who we think you are. <laughs> are you clear about the process today? Yes. Hello? Janet Scott. Six please. Thank you. I think on Category C murders, Detective Sergeants should be able to be the senior investigating officer. Category Cs are generally pretty straightforward, so you could have a small team headed by a DS. You could do a partial Holmes or even run the investigation on paper, so that would save you time and money. And the DCIs are a bit less on the plate, so that's definitely something I'd do. Sergeants are very busy already. Yeah, but like you said, there's a 20% budget cut, so we're all going to be working our socks off anyway. I think sergeants would rise to the responsibility. I would. Is there anything you'd like to tell us about yourself? I've had an intense few years. Sometimes I got caught up in other people's mess. Sometimes I did a pretty good job of making my own. But I have well and truly got my head screwed on these days. <laughs> this is the job that I am meant to do. It fits the way my mind works. I've always had the instinct. I'm clocking up the experience. I'm a worker. I'm not a liability. I'm a safe pair of hands. Well, we'll give you a ring within an hour or two to let you know if you passed. If you have, you'll be told where and when you'll be posted sometime over the coming month. Right. Thank you. How'd you get on, Sherlock? She says nothing. He thinks he's a comedian. He's about as funny as sewage. Come on in. Yes. Good luck. Ta. Rob! MIT resources have been on. They've got a missing from home they're not happy about. He's 18. He's got learning difficulties. He's on medication. High risk. 72 hours since he went missing. Does he live at home? Yeah, but his mum and dad didn't report it. So, who reported it? His boss. He washes pots in a pub. The landlord's a retired copper. Mm. Did you ever do that? Run a pub? Er, uh, no. Anyway, he's downstairs, the landlord. Right. And then he said, oh, and by the way, Jill, you can tell your DS where we're sending him. Uh, sorry, who, who said? The fellow at MIT Resources. They want you to have a multiple inquiry experience. Oh, sorry, They're then. putting you on all these historic child abuse cases. Start date's the same, first of the month. Right. Well, go on then, don't keep him waiting. Uh, the landlord? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, I can't read this. What's the lad's name? Robin McKendrick. McKendrick. Thank you. Nearly done. Um, is there anything you want to tell us about yourself? It might seem odd to be applying for promotion at 50, so I'd just like to say a bit about that. I took a long career break when my children were small, so I've actually only clocked up 20 years' service. And in that time, I think I've become one of those steady, competent, quietly indispensable types. I've seen plenty of officers fly over my head and up the ladder, and I suspect that most of them haven't been as good as me. I've got at least 10 years' service to offer. My children are practically on their way. I'm in the best position I've ever been in to push forward. I am 50, but I'm not trailing off. I'm gearing up. You didn't hear me compare him to sewage. But no, the door was shut. Is it nerve wracking enough for you? I don't think I've sweated that much since I was arrested. I use one of those deodorants that blocks your sweat ducts for 48 hours, then kills you. <laughs> oh, what if I don't pass? I'd be extremely surprised if you didn't. It didn't go badly in there, did it? Well, it went somewhere between brilliantly and shit. Bye. If I pass, I want Rob's job. Detective Sergeant on our syndicate. Here. Me too. Briefing room at half past. Right, you are. Hiya. How'd you go? I got a clue. No. Robbie McKendrick, 18 years old, vulnerable adult, reported missing by a man called John Rivington, who's the landlord of the Angel in Ashton. He's a retired copper. A bit scary, actually. And his concern is. The family's Ziffy, they're known to the police. Also, there's a problem in the area with gangs. Is Robin involved? Robin will run with whoever will have him. He's simple. No one but me would employ him. And when did you last see him? On Thursday night. He was working. Some of the lads he knows were in on the Friday without him. He had a shift on the Sunday, but he never turned up. And Sunday's when he gets paid. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. 
I must have rung him 20 times. And he never has that phone out of his hand. Let's talk to these Latinos. They go to the pub after football practice on a Wednesday. So tonight, should we go along to get some interviews, see if we can get a sighting of Robin between Thursday and Sunday? Yes, and let's get around to Robin's family. We want a full background history, not relying on the information of his employer, even if he is a lovely ex-officer. Did you say anything else? You're very young to be a sergeant. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <clears throat> on a fast track. Tip for the top. No, he, he didn't say anything else. <clears throat> right. Hey, before I forget, stop hiding the car keys. It's gone through the roof since we moved into this building. We are sharing, sharing with another syndicate. We've got 12 MIT cars between 30 detectives, which I'm not saying is easy, but hogging or hiding the car keys is not the solution. In fact, it could be downright dangerous. So whoever it is, you better stop before I'm onto you, or you won't be driving anywhere. Right. CCTV. CCTV inside the pub, outside the pub. Well, well, well. Get a load of us, Janet. How do? Guess what? We passed the board. Yeah, of course well you done. Did. Hey, Rob's job's going bigger than a fortnight. Well, it doesn't have to be one of us, does it? We could be offered a sergeant's job anywhere. Yeah, they could appoint someone from outside for this job. Who knows? It'll all come out in the wash one way or another. Do you know what? We should enjoy this. We did it. We passed. It's great. <laughs> no cocky's on the hook. Any ideas? Yeah. Jill's wrong. It's not hogging. It's strategic retaining. Yeah, strategic retaining. You ready? Yeah. I passed the board. <laughs> Robin McKendrick's dad sounds nasty. Just had an intelligence officer from Langson wondering why we're looking at him. They've got a flag on him for cross-border armed robbery. Intelligence suggests he's still active, so be careful. Bathroom and no window between the bedrooms. Meter box above the door. Do you know it? We're hoping one exactly like it. So when did you last see Robin? We've already told the other lot. It's with us now, so we have to go over it, I'm afraid. They searched the house. I'm sorry. It's routine procedure. When did you last see Robin? When he come in Thursday night. After his shift at the pub? And was he home on the Friday? Don't know. We had a lie-in. What about when we came down? What time is that? Dinner time. And did you see him at all after he came home on the Thursday night? John Rivington reported him missing on Monday after he didn't show up for work in the pub on the Sunday. And it seemed like no one had seen him for three days. I was just wondering why you didn't report him missing yourselves. He's his own boss, he's got a job. And is that normal? For Robin to be away from home for a few days and not tell you where he is? I thought he might have got lucky. Is that prescription, Robins? I don't know whose it is. Yeah, it is. Can I have a look? Thank you. He was put into care age 12 because his brother was picking on him. Following an incident where the brother tried to strangle Robin, Mrs McKendrick told social services that she couldn't cope and requested that he be put into care. Robin? Mm. Social services returned him to the family home two years ago, age 16. No, his parents were horrible. He wasn't looked after. They didn't report him missing and they were the last people to see him. Where's his brother? Glasgow. He is. We checked. What was the prescription for? Uh, hydroxyzine. It's an antihistamine, but it's sometimes prescribed for anxiety disorders. I'm just waiting for his GP to get back to me. See what House to House throws up. Let's eliminate this family as a priority. Constable Janet Scott, we're investigating the disappearance of Robin McKendrick. He was working in the pub last Thursday night. We're here to ask a few questions, see if anyone knows where he might be. Did you ever see him at all? We'd like to have a quick chat with you, individually, if that's okay. Get your names and addresses. Take a quick photo. When was the last time you did see Robin? Can you remember? A few days ago. This week? Not sure. Not for a while. Is it you? I've just radioed in the details that you gave us. It's what we call a body check. You don't show us living at that address. It's my girlfriend's flat. Well, can you tell us the address where you know? Yeah. I need to go. Sorry about that. Well, I'll just take your details and we'll be in touch to arrange time that suits you. Don't mind if I take a quick photo, do you? 
Most of them were pretty uncooperative. Quite a few joys. I had two of them bolting for the door on urgent business, allegedly. They weren't who they said they were. Did you get photos? Yeah. yeah. No sightings of Robin since Thursday. House to house was interesting. Several neighbours said they often hear screaming and shouting at Robin's house. I've been in touch with Uniform Operations. We've briefed up a pulser. First thing tomorrow morning, a team's going back to that house to search it thoroughly with the cadaver dog. He's disappeared without a trace. His phone's dead. I'm not expecting to find this boy alive. OK, thank you all for another late one. Night, night. And congratulations to Janet and Rachel, who've both passed the promotion board. <laughs> Bombs, no lunatics. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Night. Do you cook food sometimes. Like what? Like fish fingers sometimes. And I bought some onions. Congratulations. Yeah, and when I was ready for them, they had these plant things growing out of the top of them. Which is why I hate onions. Sounds like you weren't ready for them for a while then. Life is too short for chopping up things that make you cry and make your fingers stink. Which is the other reason why I hate onions. Rach, can I call you back? I'm doing you a little routine. Don't you like it? Um, no, I do, but I think something's up with the lease. I'd better go. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. You all right? I need to talk to you. What is it? I want to live with my dad. Why did no one ask me? It's got nothing to do with you. Of course it has. It affects all of us. But it is Elise's choice. It's my illegal choice. It's so rude to Mum. I don't think it is. Why do you look like you've been crying then? I'm 18. You only want to live around there because you fancy Alfie. That is rubbish. I want to live around there because it's fun. There's other kids there. Dad and Eleanor come home from work at normal times. They all eat tea together and everyone dances in the kitchen on Friday. And I'm up here on my own with Granny. Stop shouting. You love being with Granny. Not all the time. Shut up now. Don't worry. I heard every word. We'll all miss Elise. I'll miss her like crazy, but she's not going to the moon. It is her choice. It's something that she wants to try and we'll all get used to it. And we'll be fine. And I'll try not to be too boring. Thanks, Mum. She's brilliant. You better get off to bed, Missy. You've never been happy with the way I do that, have you? Oh, for God's sake! What are you shouting at me for? I don't want to fall out with you over the dishwasher. Well, stop twiddling about with it, then. I'm supposed to be a help around here. I just seem to be a hindrance. Just, um, had a phone call. Fine, thank you. I've got to choose between Rachel and Janet for your job. I shouldn't be down to you. Damn right. The board are dead set on having one of them. Continuity, blah, blah. They're the two best candidates. Nothing in it. HR say I know my team best, so I'm the one who's got to decide. Well, you will. And you'll make the right choice. Who would you choose? Mum, that's not for me to say. No. You're right, I will. Anyway, classified. Thank you. And then it says, frying until translucent. Yeah. Well, are they having a laugh? Do they want me to get a bit of onion out of the pan and hold it up to a window? No, it just means when it's not white and hard anymore and it's gone a bit floppy and shiny and a bit, well... Mm, yeah, see-through. I don't mean see-through like... Glass. Uh, no, something that's actually see-through. Well, yeah, sort of vaguely... We've had a call in. It says his name's John. He's prepared to talk to us about Robin. Not on record and not at his home. Do you want us to go? <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm 
Janet, we met in the pub. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about Robin, being worried about Robin. And I think you probably are too. That's why you rang in. You can talk to me. She's all laughing about it. We were all laughing about it. He said they'd roughed him up and shot him in the boot of a car. Whose car? Jackie boys. Jackie boy was saying, I'll let him out in a bit. I'm like, you're joking, he's still in there. And he goes, just let me stew in it while they have a pint. And then they went off to let him out, but they said they were going to come back. And then Jackie boy came back on his own, and I goes, I was Twister. Is Twister Robin? Yeah, you seen his, you seen his face? I goes, I was Twister. And he goes, I let him out the boot. And he ran off like a scared cat. We won't be seeing him for a few days. Uh, there's two of them. Stephen Jackson, his nickname's Jackie Boy. He's a squaddy, or was, that's not clear. And uh, his pal, who's called Nick Hennessy. Your timing is immaculate. Why? The search in the McKendrick's house was a washout. The cadaver dog was like, game on. They ripped the floor up. Nothing. Shit. Hmm. Mr McKendrick's doing his nut. Shit. This will pacify Her Majesty. If we're on the right track. <laughs> We're not relying on the opinion of a dog, so that's got to be programmed. Jackie Boy and Nick bragged to this lad about locking Robin in the boot of Jackie Boy's car, which everyone thinks is hilarious. The two of them go off to release him, and Jackie Boy comes back not long after, just Jackie Boy, not Nick, and he says that they let Robin out of the boot of his car, he ran off like a scared cat, but the following day, Saturday, Jackie Boy reported his car stolen. I looked on Jackie Boy's Facebook page. Every time he so much as farts, he shares it with Nick, and this other bloke, Ethan. So I went looking on Ethan's Facebook page to see what he'd been posting, and I found this photo that he'd shared at 9.15 on Friday night, which was still on some of his pals' pages but which is taken down from his own at ten past midnight. It's a photo of Robin McKendrick looking messed up and petrified in the boot of a car. Did Ethan take the photo? I don't know. Robin's missing. Jackie Boy's reported his car missing. The last sighting of Robin we've got, potentially, is this photo, Friday night, in the boot of Jackie Boy's car. So what's happened next? Have they killed him? I think that Ethan was possibly Facebooking from home when he posted the photo. There's a lot of activity for someone who's on the move. But if Ethan took the photo and we know he didn't go into the pub, then maybe he doesn't know whatever happened next to Robin. Well, maybe he found out later and whatever he found out made him take it down. Mm. Well, we need to concentrate on that timeline, when the photo's posted to when it's taken down. I want telecoms for these three, who's phoning who. CCTV from inside the pub should show us who's bobbing in and out and when. We could arrest Jackie Boy right now for assault. Assault and abduction. We've got enough on him. The photo verifies what this witness told Janet. I think it might be an idea to talk to Ethan first. If he's caught up in some of it, but not the worst of it, he's going to be scared of being implicated and want to save his skin. He might tell us what he knows. What do you think, boss? I think we could be looking to arrest Jackie Boy for something bigger than assault and abduction once we've spoken to Ethan. So let's start with Ethan. Hi, love. Detective Constable Rachel Bailey. Detective Constable Pete Radio. Is Ethan in? He is, yeah. Hello. 